What's going on guys? My name is Chris and this is Regular Guy Training. So the internet is quite um, vocal about uh, shotgun slugs and distance um, as far as where the, the shot slugs themselves end up and the elevation differences in certain distances. And some of these are, uh, are vocalized as gigantic, like a really, really huge um, uh, point of impact change between something like 50, 75, and 100 yards. So here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do is that we're going to run out and we're going to use both a 12 gauge and a 20 gauge shotgun and we're going to use um, some proper hunting ammunition for both. Now I have two different types of ammunition here. Okay. For the 12 gauge, we're looking at some Winchester Super X. It's a two and three quarter inch, um, 1600 foot per second at muzzle uh, velocity, one ounce slug. Okay, and this is pretty much what we're dealing with right here. Now, this is a pretty good quality shotgun slug all by itself. Um, I've used these uh, before, uh, not just on or in classes or whatever. Uh, I've used them to like take game and stuff too. Uh, the second one that we're going to go ahead and use is, and this is for the 20 gauge, uh, we're using some Remington uh, half ounce, uh, two and three quarter inch, 1800 uh, foot per second on muzzle velocity. And this is also, and again, this is what it looks like. So we're gonna use them out of these two different shotguns and the distances that we're gonna cover here are, we're gonna be at 10, 25 yards, 35 yards, 50, 75, and 100. So that's six shots in total. And I have um, a good uh, human silhouette sized piece of steel target, uh, or a human silhouette steel target rather, that we're gonna go ahead and shoot. Gonna paint it a flat color so that we get the impacts um, very loudly from it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this out and we're gonna check it out. Now, two caveats here. First and foremost, the Mossberg um, shotgun that I'm using is using a brass bead sight, okay? And out the factory, those are uh, zeroed for 75 yards. There will be a little bit of a variation, I'm willing to bet, on just windage, um, because, over, because over time, I've pretty much gotten it fairly dialed in. I know what it, what it does as far as elevation and stuff. And the second one that we're using is a Weatherby 20 gauge, and that actually has a set of adjustable sights. Those are zeroed for 50 yards. Okay, so that being the only caveats that I have as far as little tiny disparities that I know people are going to comment on later, uh, they're not going to be much difference as far as elevation, not much, because I will be holding on the same spot of the target the entire time. All right, so let's check it out. All right, as you can see, we're going to start shooting at this target. It's nice and blank, just finished painting it over. I didn't use white paint because tan was available, so there you go. All right, so as you can see, if you're going left to right, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, at six, diff six different shots, six different hits. Now, this guy on the far left um, is actually uh, my 50 yard line shot. I noticed um, that the sight itself um, is a shoots a little bit to the left if I'm holding den on, started at starting at 50 yards, started to come over. And at 75, we're about here, and then we're back into where we needed to be. But as you could tell, my hold was right here the entire time. Okay. Me holding here, which is which would be like upper thoracic cavity and stuff the whole time, you can actually see that it's zeroed for this, so you can see a little bit of a drop-off. But 75 was pretty close to what it was that I was trying to, uh, I'm sorry, 50 and 75 were pretty much right on where I was trying to hold before. So 
realistically speaking, aside of the fact that it's a line of sight zero type issue, there isn't much variation. Like you can actually see that, I mean, as far as if my windage was good and stuff like that, the whole time, this whole shock group here would have been way more than enough to take a deer and certainly a person. All right, so you can see where I painted back over. I'm gonna wait for this to uh, dry and then we're gonna go to the 20 gauge. All right, so interestingly enough, you can actually see really, really tightly how it's grouped in for um, 10, 25, and 35 yards right in the center there. Off to the left, I was standing at 50 yards. That's my fault. But elevation-wise, it's still pretty good with the center group. Now, these sights are zeroed for 50 yards, so then once you end up at 75 and 100, you can actually see it starting to drop there. But even still, aside of the 100 yard line um, shot slug, these other five are right in where they need to be. So, I don't know. I mean, there is a little bit of drop at the 100, so I'll give that some credence. But for the most part, realistically, there ain't much um, as far as an elevation difference between the, uh, the di between the slug itself and the actual distance. So, huh, well, that's kind of interesting. As you guys can see, there isn't that much of a difference. There was quite a little bit of an elevation change on the 20 gauge shotgun, and that was a difference between uh, 50 yards zero and 100 yards, so there's a little bit more of a drop up. I may change that to 75 yards just to keep everything a little bit more consistent. But the 12 gauge uh, carried itself much better, and as far as just elevation is concerned, yeah, there's a little bit of an elevation change here or there. Um, but, realistically speaking, factoring in like human error and stuff, there is not that much of an elevation change. Now, at 50 going out, I was supposed to um, be on a bag so that I could, or shoot from a bag in the prone, so that I could remove some more human error. I screwed up, and with a 20 gauge shotgun, I shot it from standing. So there's a little bit of a, of a windage thing to deal with there. But as I started to back up, I noticed that there was still a, a windage change to the left, even while I was on a bag. So, you know, it, full disclosure there, because you guys saw the target getting shot and not me in physical position. But other than that, there is not that much of a difference, really. And of course, there could be some human error factored in there on where exactly the site was, as far as my perspective and the target itself, all that. But for the most part, even with those factors in there, it was still pretty tight uh, at varying dis distances and stuff. And what's kind of crazy is that like the difference between that and just like holdovers uh, for being uh, for a line of sight versus the actual zero. There's less disparity between the shotgun than there is between a uh, freaking AR. You know. Now I'm not sitting here saying that there's less elevation drop with a shotgun. Okay, that's freaking ludicrous. It's way heavier, going way slower. But the point is still made there that with the shot, with the sights on the shotgun itself being so low to actual bore, there's less elevation change at different distances. So with all that, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where just like all things on the internet, there's people that say that there's no difference, and there's people that say that it's a massive difference, and the truth is usually nestled somewhere in between. Okay, and you guys saw me run out and shoot these actual distances and all that other stuff, and you could very easily um, cop it out to, you know, um, just camera tricks and stuff like that, but it was pretty much the most solid way that I could do this for you guys, and you can take the information with that and, and run with it. Now, understand that if you change up ammunition, it'll change things a little bit. You know, um, I've used lower power sl lower powered slugs before, and have gotten similar results. I will say that uh, the shot groups are slightly more opened up because it's lower powered, less uh, quote accurate stuff. But at the same time, it, this, the results are still fairly similar. 
But what I would encourage you to do, because everyone has their own little favorite shotgun slug and stuff like that, um, go out and shoot these actual distances with your shotgun. Figure out where exactly the hold is, and and you can make the decisions that you want to make as far as what you use for sights and all this other stuff uh, based on the data that you collect. But here was mine. So if you have any questions, throw them in the comments section below. Uh, if you want to support us on Patreon and figure out what exactly that we can do for you, as well as um, other guys like getting soldiers and stuff like that trained through the school, uh, go ahead and check out the link in the description uh, provided below. And remember, guys, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.